Welcome to Bleacher Bloggers for Tuesday, August 28th. Today we got your college football picks plus a tour of the NFC South. We talk about the non-existent state of American tennis and the wisdom of the all-knowing Stefan Marbury. Uh-huh. He's sort of like if Merlin and Einstein had a baby now. Mernstenberry. <laughs> Stefan Mer- Mernstenberry? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Mernstenberry. We start with a new feature for the college football season, Alma Matters, where we get your take on your favorite team. Now, we asked you guys who we should look out for this upcoming season, and here's what you came up with. We start with Bucky the Badger's contribution from YouTube. The Badgers have P.J. Hill returning, and he looks very promising. Our defense is monstrous. Only problem I see is a starting QB. Sounds like a lot, but uh, we'll see. QB. Like, that matters. <laughs> needs a quarterback. Come on. Seriously. But they do have P.J. Hill, like he said. Yeah. Over 1,500 yards rushing as a freshman last year. Yeah. They have a solid O-line. Like, all those guys are coming back. They're going to run the ball. They're going to need that O-line, and they're going to run the ball because they don't know who the quarterback is. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to Ross Martinet over at YouTube. Short and sweet. I think Cal will beat you. USC and go to the Rose Bowl. Well, that game against USC is at home, so that's an advantage. And a lot of star players are transferring away from USC. Maybe Cal can pick up some of those guys, actually. That might help them in that game. And uh, I think this game will go USC's way because uh, you can't replace Marshawn Lynch. Uh, he's been, uh, he was great, obviously. Yeah, he for was them. a monster. Yeah. All right, this is from Knicks in 08, and uh, he doesn't like Florida. Man, Florida is overrated. They return two starters on defense. They lose their QB. And sure, the Gators say Tim Tebow can pass, but I like to see it with my own eyes. Uh, Tim Tebow can run. Tim Tebow, we know Tim Tebow can, can run, run. downhill, <laughs> downhill. Yeah. Can he last past week three no. with that style though? Not a whole game. I mean, he was doing it only in the red zone. Yeah. If he doesn't throw, uh, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Big trouble. Tennis, anyone? That's right. The U.S. Open started yesterday. For all you football fans who don't think tennis is a sport, you're wrong. We start with Craig Hickman on tennis.blogspot.com. If Blake doesn't make his first slam semifinal with his draw, he might want to consider a different profession. This isn't cupcake. It's cotton candy. With a drunk J block rooting him on, only his head can keep him from another no-show against a name in the semifinals. Two things about that. Yeah. One, I love how Roger Federer is now just the <laughs> name. And two, I love how... You know, the blog says Blake, and most of the people are like, who's Blake? They don't even know. James Blake, all right? Yeah, yeah, Learn him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the thing about James Blake. In a world littered with athletes that are just garbage and yeah. just, you know, bad attitudes, this yeah. guy is such a good guy. Went to Harvard. In one year, three years ago, he lost his father. He broke his neck when he hit a net post. Got shingles. And he got shingles on his face, <laughs> right? So how do you not root for this guy? Come on! Totally. Give James Blake a little love. The only problem is... He's probably not going to win this year. Yeah, so uh, Roger Federer for Pete? Uh, yes. Yeah, all that Blake conversation, Roger Federer for Pete. When we come back at NFC South Preview, and we'll talk to a blogger from FreeDarko.com about Michael Vick's newest cheerleader, Stefan Marbury. Hope he's not in the skirt. That'd be Stephanie Marbury. Ah, uh, his sister. Yeah. Does he have a sister? No. Hey, Andres, is that the new iPhone now? Yeah, but it's a little bit different. Can I check it out? I wouldn't really touch it. Why not? Well, it's a special kind of iPhone. Well, it's it's a special kind of iPhone. Dude, I wouldn't do that. Welcome back, and we continue with our pigskin preview of the NFC South, and we're going to New Orleans, home of the Saints, for saintsblog.com, posted by Mark J, and he posts in response to the Saints win over the Chiefs, and he basically says that the Saints dominated Kansas City, but he does qualify it by saying that he knows LJ didn't play, Brody Quarrell isn't very good, and Herm Edwards is wrecking the uh, Chiefs, (laughs) just like he wrecked the Jets. So not only does he give the Saints props, but he also craps all over the Chiefs. Right. We go to blogs.charlotte.com slash Panthers, posted by Stan Olson, after Watching the Panthers lose to the Pats, Stan says, Carolina's defense is not yet ready for prime time. The Patriots and quarterback Tom Brady made that abundantly clear. Brady and most of his fellow starters piled up 179 yards of total offense by halftime, blah, blah, blah. Nobody is going to stop the Pats. you got to just throw that in there, don't yeah, you? Just move on to the Moving on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers exactly. at buckup.com, posted by Jay Scott. Michael Clayton has a mohawk. Greg Spires has a man beard. Barrett <laughs> Rudd has a porn stash. And sadly, those are probably the three best things that are going to happen to the Bucks all season long. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the Atlanta Falcons, falconslocker.com, posted by Dog Pounded. DJ Shockley will miss the entire 2007 season after he tore his ACL. Uh, look for the Falcons to make a move before the season starts to bring in any quarterback, some quarterback, anybody. Uh, they need somebody. You know who's good? Who? Matt Schaub. Oh, yeah. Is he available? No. Oh. 
So speaking of Falcons quarterbacks, here to help us break down the ongoing saga of Michael Vick and his new best friend, Stefan Marbury, mm. is Dr. Lawyer Indian Chief from FreeDarko.com, who, by the way, is the author of our blog of the day, and it's a great blog about Marbury. So first of all, what do we call you, Dr., Dr. Lawyer, Dr. Chief? Um, well, I haven't, I haven't officially gotten my doctor yet until uh, 2009, but you, you can call me Dr. L-I-C. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be appropriate. All right, that's good. So uh, uh, you wrote a great article about Steph, as we mentioned. Uh, can you give our viewers a little recap of what you wrote? Yeah, sure. It, it was kind of uh, an exacerbated article uh, of my feelings about Stephon Marbury's descent into insanity over the summer, uh, kind of uh, the various crazy things he said or done, culminating with uh, his recent comments on Michael Vick, in which he was uh, essentially calling dog fighting a sport. I, I guess he took those comments back, but uh, it, it, was, it was an article both praising Marbury's willingness to kind of really be honest in a world full of phony athletes, and sort of about how because he doesn't have any endorsements and everybody already hates him, that he sort of has a license to speak his mind and say, uh, really stupid things. In honor of Marbury's comments, we are giving him the inaugural Marge Shot Public Speaking Award. Congratulations, wow. Stefan. Congratulations. Wow. One in a million. It's a big honor. It's a big yes. honor for Steph. It is. Yeah. All right, now on to Michael Vick here, uh, Dr. LIC. Uh, in a perfect world, what kind of punishment do you think Vick deserves here? Um, I think he should be assigned to be the lifetime quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I'm a Vikings fan, and uh, that's a cursed franchise, so uh, that's that's pretty much the jail sentence. So after he gets out of actual jail, he should be forced to play for the Vikings for the rest of his career. He could be the next Spurgeon win. So let's say that you're uh, Mike Vick's PR agent, okay, and you got to spin this and get back in the good graces of PETA. What's your plan? How do you do it? Honestly, I don't think there's anything that Michael Vick can do to restore his image. I think America is obsessed with this narrative of there should be some punishment for the highest paid athlete in all of football. That um, because of Michael Vick's status, you know, when Quintel Woods was dogfighting, no one really cared whatsoever. But because it's Michael Vick, there's sort of this satisfying justice to the whole thing that if it was dogfighting, if it was the battle at the airport, something. These are the guys that America loves to persecute. Yeah, I yeah, agree. I'm, yeah. I tend to agree with you. Well well said, well said. All right, Dr. LIC, you can check him out at freedarko.com. I am telling you, this is a sports blog of sports blogs. You need to check this site out. It's really amazingly well written. you got to check it out, freedarko.com. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks. Get off the bench. All right, coming up on Friday, not only are we talking baseball and we're talking NFC West, but we're also going to have another edition of the Fan Mail Fun Bag, which means if you guys have any comments you want to make about us, get them in now and we'll read them on the air. Post them up on YouTube, post them up on Bleacher Bloggers, or link us up to your site and we'll possibly read them on the air. Also, we're giving away that Upper Deck Sweet Spot 10 on Friday show, so make sure you become a subscriber at YouTube and you could possibly take home that Sweet Spot 10 with Richard a Richard Pryor, Pryor autograph. autograph. See you guys on Friday.